Well, if I'm going to, you know, maybe mom should describe him, but I would like to take a shot at that too. Um, he's a great, he's a great kid. Not that any child ever deserves something like this, but, uh, you know, he certainly didn't, didn't ask for it, but he, he is a great kid. He's super hard worker. He loves the challenge. And, and he's such a, a good, uh, good personality, really good personality. He's got, you know, lots of friends and he just, he's, he's such a kind hearted child. He gets along with everyone and um, he just, uh, he's, a, he's a good guy. He's just a really good guy. My nickname for Jacob when he was a baby was Yes Man because he would do anything I asked. Always well behaved. You tell him what to do and he goes out and he does it. Exactly what you said. He's just a well behaved, nice young man. So mm -hmm. that's Jake. I saw a small bruise, like the size of a dime, on right above his belly button. I said, oh, you'll be fine. So by that Sunday, though, he um, started to get dizzy, lightheaded. Stomach pain was increasing, and, um, and it continued to increase every week. Every day he got worse and towards the last two weeks, I mean, I'm saying every day was worse. I drove up to Marshfield Clinic to the emergency room after talking to several doctors and insurance companies and trying to find out what we can do to help him. Within 30 minutes we were I was uh, strolling him over in the wheelchair over to Dr. Vigut's office. He couldn't sit up, so he was laying down on the cot, and she came in, and she spent two hours with us. Um, and uh, she ran some more tests, and then she said, I'm not sure. There's, I don't see anything physically wrong with him. And she said, let me talk to some people and see what I can figure out. I'll talk to Dr. Mylan, a physical therapist that I know. I'll talk to a neurologist. I'll talk to different people. And um, the next day he got worse. I had to carry him to the bathroom. And um, Paul called her and she's like, bring him in. And then Dr. Vagut took the information that we provided that she got from the neurologist and she spoke to Dr. Milan and somebody there figured out that there was a chance that it was this really rare condition. I think at times some people have thought this is something that um, kids are doing on purpose, but it's definitely not. It's something that the brain is controlling that they don't have control over. And the pain is definitely excruciating. She said he, he's going to recover 100%. She told us that. It's hard to believe. But we, tr we, had, we put all of our trust in the doctors. I walked in and it was a room of 12 nurses, doctors, physical therapists, um, and they were all working to help my kid. And, uh, and they were giving it their all. They were, they were treating him like it was their own kid. And um, they were all there to help him. And that was, that was probably the most amazing thing to me. I felt so alone. 
the week before that, before he was admitted, felt like nobody cared to find out what was wrong with him. And um, to go from that to 12 amazing professionals in a room that were all working to get him walking again and getting him to be in the kid again, um, that was that was probably the most amazing thing to me. So in general, what we're trying to do is reset this thermostat or wiring that's, that's gone haywire and cre creating these abnormal movement and pain signals. And we don't have a shot or a pill that can do that. And the treatment has always been movement and trying to regain control of your movements and control of your pain. Child Life came up with the idea of using the VR goggles. And initially they thought that was going to just help him deal with the pain while he was doing other things. And it really turned out to be something so much more than that. That was amazing. Oh my gosh. I got to watch him in the one-way mirror and he didn't know I was there. And the therapists were all working with him. And I had to film it on my phone so my husband could see it because I couldn't believe it. I was like, he's, he's kicking, he's throwing a ball. He's doing all this stuff with these VR goggles um, and these therapists, oh my gosh, I think they, they get paid to have a lot of fun with him because they were just, they were doing all sorts of stuff with him. They understood it. And that, I don't know how you can find in central Wisconsin, physicians that have that much knowledge about something this rare. But you'd swear they've dealt with it hundreds of times the way they handled it. And that night I sent her a thing and I said, geez, look at this, he's walking. And he walked from his wheelchair to a walker to go to the teen center. And I'm, I thought, this is just unbelievable. Whatever hurdle, they got him through. They got him through it. They did exactly what they needed to do. They needed to get his mind out of his body so his body could do what it knew to do. He got out of the hospital and he thought we would be all done with it and it wasn't that way at all. I mean, it took a lot longer than we expected to get him back to being able to tell his body that he was okay again. I would say he's 100%. He, yeah. he knows now, his body seems to know when he gets injured that he can recover. Jacob's now a freshman in high school. He's gotten his first job. Jacob has become a young man. He really quite amazed us in that from how ill he was two years ago to how well he has recovered and he is a normal, achieving, healthy young man. I think it's definitely made him a stronger person and he knows that he can overcome anything. Jacob is a great kid. We had some bumps, but I just knew in my heart that he was going to be okay. It just was going to take time. <laughs> and it did. 